Many conservatives believe that you should secure the border before you send another dollar to help Ukraine. Do you agree with that? I mean, I think the Ukraine war should be ended. And I think I, I wouldn't necessarily couple those issues, but I think the Ukraine war is a war of choice, um, that it's a war that's easily settled, and that we should not be spending any more money in Ukraine. We need that money here. Do you believe that any person who has crossed the border and commits a crime should be deported from this country? Of course. Of course they should be deported. And the major thing is to shut down the border, which we can do pretty much overnight. And that, you know, through a combination of policy of reinstating the Migratory Migrant Protection Act, which requires people who are coming through with asylum claims that their case be adjudicated in Mexico, not the United States. Um, we should end the catch and release program and, and have a catch and return program at the border. And build a uh, wall? We need the wall. We need, you need, we need a physical barrier as a wall in the urban areas and places where migrants can disappear very quickly. And then we need other infrastructure, including monitoring, uh, long-range cameras, lights, fences, and a lot of the other areas. You don't need to put a wall 2,200 miles from Brownsville, Texas to San Diego, but you need monitoring systems. And we had those in place, and the Biden administration dismantled them. Anyway, we'll keep scrolling that. Joining us now, though, for the hour is former President Donald Trump is with us. Sir, thank you thank for being you with very us. Much, yeah. And thank you. On the day you came down the escalator, this was a big issue. Yeah. You were attacked all, right out of the box, yeah. you know, that day when you came down that escalator on this issue. Well, I was hearing about it from a lot of people, and it was one of the primary reasons in 2016 that I ran. And I ran on the border, and I ran on other things, but I ran on the border largely. and. Uh, we fixed the problem, and in 2020, it wasn't even a subject. I'd go out, I'd say, I want to talk about the border. They'd say, sir, you fixed the border. Nobody cares about the border anymore. Now what's happened is since uh, the election, where we got millions more votes than we did the first time, we have a situation where this border makes 2016 look like baby stuff. It's probably the worst border. Not probably. It's the worst border ever in the history of the world. There's never been a border where 15, 16, maybe 18 million people have already crossed. And I think nobody has any idea what the number is. You know, the gotaways, they don't know what the gotaways are. We have millions and millions of people, and they come from jails and prisons. They come from uh, mental institutions. And, you know, a step above that, the insane asylums. And you, you just, it's just hard to believe. And you have terrorists coming. You know, I, I've noticed, uh, as somebody that watches your show a lot, I think you're, I think you do a fantastic job, but you say 100 percent certain, I hate to hear it, that we're going to have a big attack at some point, I that am. you're 100 percent. I pray that I'm wrong. Yeah. You're probably right, and that's a very sad thing, but I've heard you say it a few times, that I said, I'm not going to dispute it. I hope you're wrong, but there's a certainly a good chance. They're coming from numbers and countries that we wouldn't believe. So you have 28,000 from China, all fighting age. You don't see women, and you don't see men much older than that. It's from 18 to 25, 26 years old. And there's something going on. And they're coming from Yemen that we're bombing. They're coming from the Congo, from prisons in the Congo. The only good thing is it makes our prisoners look like very nice people, I'll tell you, because these are rough people that are coming in. When you see them from Venezuela fighting, having fistfights with the cops, we never saw that. You'd see cops be... A lot of bad things happen to cops. But you never saw people standing in the middle of a street with, in a fistfight. And if that happened in their country, they'd kill them within seconds. They wouldn't allow it. They wouldn't stand for it. So it's a very terrible thing. What's, our country is being poisoned. We're really being poisoned. And it's hard to believe. You know, as a business guy, you always want to understand the other side. I want to understand, what is the other side thinking, even if you disagree? I don't know what they're thinking, because who can want this? Who can want millions of people from lots of bad places pouring into our country? And you're right, we have not seen this is just the beginning. You know, we're, we're just starting to see, I call it migrant crime. I really call it Biden migrant crime, but it's too long. So let's just call it migrant crime, and everyone's going to know it's because of Biden. But we've never had anything like this. We have an inflow of people at numbers that are unbelievable. And you go back to New York and you see hundreds of thousands of people. And you can see, look, the mayor is trying. He wants to do a job, but it's just, it's impossible. Well, he made the city sanctuary. They, they made New York City a sanctuary city. I want to go back to what you referred to, what I've been saying. 
because I point out, we'll put it up on the screen, uh, the numbers of people coming from Iran, the number one state sponsor of terror, yep. their satellite Syria. Yep. You have the home of the Muslim Brotherhood, Egypt. Thousands came coming from Egypt that we know of. Yep. Thousands coming from Afghanistan. Now Al Qaeda has training camps up again. Then, you know, over 10, 12, 14,000 from Russia. And I read recently over 37,000 recently from China. Now, why would they make that long journey to our southern border? And my fear is that we are, we have in this country, because these illegals are not vetted, I fear that terror cells have set up in this country that will plot, plan, scheme the, the next 9-11 or worse. I pray to God, as I said, I'm wrong. I don't think I'm wrong, Mr. President. Well, China has, as of today, 29,000 young men, for the most part, uh, in our country for the last three or four months. And there's something going on. Look, there's something going on. Now, hopefully, we don't have that problem with China. I always had a good relationship with China until the COVID came in. That was a step too far. We took in hundreds of billions of dollars from China. No president took in 10 cents, not 10 cents. And we, uh, you know, we still got along with them. But when you look at this, and when you look at other countries, we have a lot coming in from Iran. We have a lot coming in from, you know, places that we're fighting right now. You know, here go the bombs. You don't have to have bombs. We had no war. It was the first one, 78 years, we had no war other than I defeated ISIS. We knocked out ISIS. We took out the leading terrorists in the world, both of them, took them out, gone. And now... Baghdadi, Soleimani, yep. the now, yeah. leader of uh, Al-Qaeda in Yemen. Al-Baghdadi and Soleimani, the worst in the world, worst in the world. And uh, you look at it and you look at what's going on with our country. I tell you, you come to Texas, this is now a war zone. And they view it as a war zone. And Mexico's doing nothing to help us. They're letting the caravans come unimpeded. I mean, they come in by the thousands. You have caravans with 25,000 people in them just walking into our country. So something has to be done. The problem you have is Arizona. You have a governor, a very liberal governor, that a lot of people say shouldn't be the governor. And in uh, California, Newsom's doing a terrible job. He's doing, I mean, other than talking about how wonderful it is, that's about it. You have an outflow of people, as you know better than anybody. I saw your show with him. I said, you know, this guy's talking about California. Millions of people are coming in through California. Free health care. Free health care, free education, free everything. Yeah, and you go to jail, they let you out, they don't turn you over to ICE. But not for our veterans. For our veterans, they get nothing. And for people that have been there for a long time and deserve something, citizens, they get nothing. But they give free health care. If you come in illegally into our country, you get things. And this is why they're coming. The incentive is so great. Our top geopolitical foe, I would argue, is China. Yeah. Uh, Russia's not far behind. Iran's not far behind. Your friend, little rocket man, you got to keep an eye on him. But China's been allowed, Chinese nationals have been buying up thousands and thousands of acres of farmland, ranch land, and land near our military installations. Now, you know President Xi, if you called him and said, uh, I, I, I know somebody, Sean Hannity, would like to buy land, farmland and ranch land in China, do you think he'd allow me? No, I don't think so. I, they, they don't allow that. And they're, they're very possessive of their country. They're very possessive of uh, staying sharp and bright and, frankly, coming into this country and buying a lot. And you could take it a step further. United States Steel, and I'm not trying to equate Japan with China, but it's all still, it's outside and they're coming in. Japan is buying U.S. Steel. U.S. Steel used to be the greatest company in the world. Now, it's a long time ago. But I don't like that. I don't like seeing that. And part of the reason is because other countries, in particular China, they dump steel into the United States. I had that problem taken care of largely because I put big tariffs on the dump steel. And I saved the steel industry. But now they're letting it go. And, you know, you're not going to have a steel. You want to buy, you want to build an army tank and you're fighting China. You're going to have to get the steel from China. And it's, uh, I think it's a very dangerous position. I don't think our country, just overall, I don't think our country has ever been in a dangerous position like it is right now. When you look at what's happened with all of this stuff that we're talking about tonight, but beyond that, just this total incompetence. And it began to a large extent with the election, but it began with Afghanistan. When we showed that weakness and that stupidity, taking the military out first, leaving $85 billion worth of equipment behind, 13 soldiers killed. Nobody ever talks about the 38 that were obliterated. They lost their arms, their legs, just obliterated. 
and we left a lot of Americans behind. You used to cover that, actually. You used to give it a countdown how many days. I think you stopped doing it. It's so long now. But it's horrible. You have Americans over there that I guess you could call them hostages in a sense, but they are over there. They're trapped behind enemy lines. It's still. a horrible thing that happened. So our country, and you have Iran getting close to building a nuclear, having a nuclear weapon, possibly 35 the days. IAEA, I'm not a fan of the UN, but they said that they think they now have weapons grade yeah, uh, you know, they do. material to they, build it weapons. Would, would have never happened. Iran was broke. I didn't let China, I told China, you're not going to buy or you're not going to do business in the United States. If you buy, no business in the United States. I told that to many countries. Nobody bought oil from Iran. It's all about the oil. Nobody bought oil from Iran. And they were broke. They were acknowledged to be broke. They had no money for Hamas. They had no money for Hezbollah. Now they have $231 billion, $231 billion that they made over the last three years. And Joe, Joe is helping to make the Iranian mullahs rich again. Well, they've, they've become the very 10 rich. Million, the 10 billion that he allowed from Iraq? They laugh at him. They laugh at him. They think he's the worst. Look, he's the worst president in the history of our country. Jimmy Carter is a very happy man now because his presidency is brilliant by comparison to Joe Biden. Brilliant. Let me ask you this. Speaking, yeah, think speaking think of your friend good. Joe, um, would have been nice if he came, he would sit with us. Um, I'm not sure if he's capable of having a discussion like this. Uh, I tend to doubt it. I've covered that fairly extensively. Um, he shows up today. And he didn't really show up at one of the hot spots at the border. No. But for, I, I played that tape. You know, everybody has children. And if the children, if they get children, they're all going to get in trouble. I don't care about what they did so much, but if they lie to you, they get in a whole lot of trouble. Right. And they've been lying to the American people for three years. I played that montage. The border's secure. The border's closed. The border's secure. The border's closed. No, it wasn't. You know, our eyes were not lying to us. We've been showing this video of these migrant caravans for three years, and now all of a sudden they have changed the narrative. This is Republicans' fault? Your reaction? It's all disinformation. Uh, Russia, Russia, Russia. Everything they do, the Demo and I guess you have to say they're masters at it. They'll say something a thousand. The, the border is great. The border is closed. And they'll say it a thousand different times. And some people are going to believe it. I think that's probably the hardest thing that they've got to do because they have destroyed this border, and they're in the process of destroying our country. We're allowing people in our country that we shouldn't have. And we are allowing an extraordinarily group, tough group of people into our country. When you have prisons and jails and mental institutions being emptied out, not just in South America, all over the world, all over the world they're being emptied out, you can check your prison population throughout the world, and it's all coming into our country. And how can that be good? And how can it be good politically? Joe Biden is here today. I want to get your reaction to that. And you just saw the other tape. And the other tape showed uh, that, that there, there are so many of Trump's policies that we reversed, I can't even list them. Yeah. It's so long. I gave a short list. And what is your reaction? Why do you think he's here today? Uh, I don't think it's an accident. And he had bragged about reversing the policies that you put in place. Uh, what's your reaction? Well, I know why he's here, because he found out that we were coming. We were here. Look, you and I made this agreement two weeks Good. ago. No, actually, I a said, month I'll and come. a half ago. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. But we made it a while yeah. ago, and the word got out. And yeah. a couple of weeks ago, it started getting out. And then uh, they found out for sure. You put up the nice little picture on the right-hand bottom corner of your television set I that I was coming. And all of a sudden, they announced that they're coming. But they went to the wrong area. They went to an area that the governor and myself have done a good job on. And there's essentially nobody coming through. So, you know, you're not seeing it. This area is tough. So if you win in November, the election's on November 5th, about 249 days, of, if I'm right. And on... How do you reverse this? Nearly 10 million unvetted illegal immigrants. We don't know where there are. Many are given court dates seven, eight years down the road. They're never showing up for those court dates. Now, you've talked about deportation. How do we identify them, we identify where they are, find them and deport them? And is that your promise to the American people? Well, absolutely. And you have no choice because this is not sustainable. The cities are going bad. The cities, the country, the whole place is going bad. You know, Every state is really a border state. And I was talking to the governor before, and he has done really a great job 
uh, Governor, Governor Abbott. Abbott. You have, Ted Cruz wanted to be here, but Chuck Schumer kept him back in D.C. You know, probably yeah. for, for a good reason, right? Mm -hmm. Look, we have to deport a lot of people, and they have to start immediately. People don't know that Dwight Eisenhower, who's a pretty tough president, I never thought of it as that, but 10 years ago, you start reading and you start really seeing. And he was a big deporter. And he would deport tremendous numbers of people. And they'd bring them just to the other side of the border. They'd come back. He'd bring them again. They'd come back. Then he brought them 2,000 miles back. And they didn't come back. We have no choice. And the way you do it is your local police. We have the greatest police. They don't get the respect that they have to get. They are treated so badly. They do something, and they end up losing their pension, even if it's a good thing. Uh, if they stop crime nowadays, they lose their pension, their family, their house. And we're going to give immunity to police, and we're going to let the police do the job that they have to do. I think it's very important. They understand who these migrants are. They know them by their first name, their last name. They know where they come from. They know everything about it's going to be the local police are going to turn them over, and we're going to have to move them back to their country. When the FBI was the world's premier law enforcement agency, and I, I believe we will achieve that again, hopefully. Hopefully. Um, you had some of the top FBI officials. They have said what we are witnessing is an invasion of military age men. You ask the question, you try to understand people that think differently than you. For the life of me, I can't come up with any rationale or reason for this. So there's two things that you think of. Number one, they maybe want the votes. They think that they're going to get these people registered and to vote and everything I'll give else. you citizenship. I hope yeah, you remember you know, me at the polls. Do all sorts of things, but yeah. I don't know. I'm doing very well his, with Hispanic, and you have a lot of Hispanic coming. But the fact is that you have two things. Either they're stupid, right, or they hate our country. Because it can only be basically one of those two things, other than the voting element, which I don't know. I'm not so sure that they believe that so much. I think it's down the road. and. Although they are trying to register people right now as we speak, which well, who have no idea what they're doing and who may don't not speak. know this. In New York City, for example, uh, local elections, yeah. illegal immigrants can vote. We got to take a break. We're just getting started. We're at the border at Eagles Pass. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else. New numbers suggest more asylum seekers and illegal immigrants are now crossing the southern border in Arizona. Port of entry that is now closed in Loopville, Arizona, due to this influx of illegal migrants coming through. Tonight, Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas called the immigration system broken. I'm very grateful for this extraordinary turnout, and I'm looking forward to hearing from you. I, and this is my second trip to the border. I was in Yuma a couple of months ago, um, and I learned a lot. I spent three days there meeting with local officials, law enforcement officials, people from the hospital systems, people from the rape centers. It was one of the most important educational efforts that I've made since been getting this campaign. The opening of the border and the influx that's coming in is an existential threat to our country and to our values. And I really want to focus today on what your ideas are for how we can stop this as quickly as possible. Procedurally, the way it happens for the cartel is there's a coordinator in Tucson or Phoenix and then a coordinator on the south side, Naco or, or Agua Prieta and they're coordinating drivers to come down to our county um, to transport the undocumented individuals okay. into Tucson, Phoenix. So a load car typically is going to have a driver, a passenger to run kind of comms, and then between four and ten uh, migrants. How are these people recruited? Almost all of them are off of Snapchat, Instagram, etc. And they just set their little digital fence um, and and it, their post will go to anybody within that fence. So as an example, 17-year-old kid from Brophy High School, which is like one of the top schools in this state, uh, private uh, school, he's recruited off of Snapchat. And he says, look, everyone in my school knows this is how you make money, ever. How, how much do they get paid? It's used to be. 700 a body, now it's up to $1,500 per body that you successfully get to Phoenix. The 
low car drivers, low cars that come through town. We have two major thoroughfares. Come through uh, town doing 100, 100, 105, 115 miles an hour. The citizens of Sierra Vista are just uh, to the edge right now. We have a high school uh, that's on one of the major uh, thoroughfares through town, as well as uh, many schools. Uh, there's been uh, police car, there's been chases that has ended up probably 100 feet from one of the elementary schools. Um, I represent 22 school districts. Students cannot learn if they're scared. Teachers cannot teach if they're constantly looking over their shoulders. We have um, illegal people coming over, jumping the fences, knocking on the doors, shaking the doors, trying to get in. We also have problems with students who are stepping over bodies. The, the dead bodies, those are of migrants who yes. uh, died of exposure. Yes, sir. Uh, with this one particular one, um, the body was tossed out of the car. Elementary school student going to the school bus. We're talking about out in the rural areas, almost in the middle of nowhere, getting on the bus, and now they're witnessing that. How can a student learn seeing something like that and then sharing it with their um, classmates and again the doors rattling people trying to get in trying to get water these are our schools these are some things that is not normal and this is where I'm talking about we have to be strategic President Obama was the first president to remodel the wall um, he left office and fell into Trump's administration then Trump was the first president to extend the barrier, first president to extend it. And, uh, and then Biden came in and shut it all down by claiming the Southwest border a non-emergency. And instead of working with locals, working with the experts of border patrol, working with sheriffs, mayors, and governors, that has not happened. And I hand carried to Secretary Mayorkas a 16-point action plan, how to secure the border. Months later, I asked him, I said, the sheriffs were asking, where are we at with that, Mr. Secretary? The quote to me was, did you give me something, Sheriff? So when President Biden took over, he declared the, the Southwest border a non-emergency, non which shut down all the um, developments here on the border. Just to get this straight, this part of the fence was built by the Obama administration. The new mo yeah, this is a model from the Obama administration. And then President Trump uh, purchased all this material, these huge piles, a mile of material here to complete the fence over that hill, and you can see the ditch, you can see the cut. And the day that he took office, uh, President Biden issued an order Declare. shutting down construction, and all of this material now is... This is a very small percentage of the material still left. The majority of it, 90%, has been shipped out and sold as scrap. Salvage. Salvage, yep. Top of the hill, come down, there's a tree to the left, that's where the scout system is at the tree every day. Cartel scout. And he directs the traffic across. Is there a cartel scout up there right yeah. now? Yeah, he's up there right now. I guarantee oh. you. Up there. The policies of the administration, they've done the exact opposite of what they're intending. Um, if anybody thinks that because human bodies are coming across that drugs are not, they're sorely mistaken. It's it's all a game. Do you think it's just pettiness that they he, oh, yeah. he wanted just to, anything Trump wanted is bad and therefore. And then everything that uh, President Biden wants is is bad too. It's both sides of the aisle that just can't come together with a common goal to go. Hey, let's let's figure this out. It's no no no, stop. Just come to the middle of the road. Another thing really to consider is how much of an enormous political football the border has become and how much of an impediment that is. Uh, at this very minute in Washington, D.C., we're just seeing political rancor. And I just think it's very important for independents like yourself to keep up the fight because only the voice of the independents can make any kind of wedge in this issue. Uh, I'll pass. I agree with that. Thank you. Yeah, join us, uh, Brian Glenn, live here in Eagle Pass, Texas, awaiting President Trump remarks here. Governor Greg Abbott, uh, Brandon Judd, I've seen working, also walking uh, with.
the president as they make their way over to the podium uh, here. And uh, from what I've been told after these remarks, uh, he'll go over and record a town hall with Sean Hannity, which will, I guess, air uh, later uh, tonight. But let's just listen in as we're live here. Eagle Pass, Texas. Shelby Park. As President Trump tours the Texas U.S. Let's listen in. not only to uh, Abbott, but to the state of Texas. So let's listen in. Well, well, we'll go tie. Okay. That's great, Governor. Thank you very much, everybody. This is an honor to be with you. We've been spending a lot of time with the governor and everybody. And the job they've done is incredible. But, you know, sadly, we're saying it's a military operation. It's an amazing job. And if you look at uh, Arizona, they haven't done anything there. Governor hasn't done a thing. And the governor in California hasn't done a thing. People are flowing through there like nothing. But Texas is very secure and is going to be even more secure by the time you finish, which will be soon. And I just want to thank some friends of mine. Brandon Judd has been a friend from day one. He knew what we were all about. And uh, knew what we were saying and doing, and I think we were ahead of our time. And uh, General Thomas Sulzer was uh, somebody that was always right there and understands this uh, Texas military department about as well as you could have. I think he understands war, because that's what you're in. You're in a war. And William Mike Gorby, you know who he is, and he's been fantastic. It's just an incredible group that you've put together, fortunately. Uh, I might ask uh, Brandon to say a couple of words, because Right at the beginning, we were, uh, we were into it. We saw what was happening, and the governor was there, and then he really, he really stepped it up. It's been amazing. Uh, I came when I was lucky enough to receive his endorsement. I endorsed him also, and uh, very proudly endorsed him. And uh, a lot of things have happened in the last little while, but this is an incredible operation. Uh, Brandon, would you like to say a couple of words, Absolutely. please? Absolutely. Thank you, sir. President, thank you. Uh, sir, I, wa I want you to know, your agents, my agents, they're mad as hell, absolutely mad. The President Biden went to Brownsville, Texas, rather than going to Arizona, rather than going to San Diego, California, rather than coming to Eagle Pass, Texas, which has been the epicenter. What President Trump has seen right here is he's seen how his policies have worked, but he's also seen how he can expand upon those policies once he takes goes back into the White House. He has seen how Governor Abbott has been able to use his policies to secure this specific area, the epicenter of the last two years of the illegal border crisis that we have had to endure. And your agents, President, they are pissed. Border Patrol agents are upset that we cannot get the proper policy that is necessary to protect human life, to protect American citizens, to protect the people that are crossing the border illegally. We want to protect them as well. And we can't do that because President Biden's policies continue to invite people to cross here. Thank goodness we have a governor like Governor Abbott. Thank goodness we have somebody that's willing to run for President of the United States, forgo everything else that he's been doing to serve the American people. President. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, the uh, reports have come out, and we've been covering them, and everybody's been. And I spoke to the parents of an incredible young lady, and you, you saw her the other day. You saw what happened the other day in Georgia. And the parents are devastated. They're incredible people. 
But this is a Joe Biden invasion. This is a Biden invasion over the past three years. I call him Crooked Joe because he's crooked. He's a terrible president, the worst president our country's ever had, uh, probably the most incompetent president we've ever had. But it's uh, allowing thousands and thousands of people to come in from China, Iran, Yemen, the Congo, Syria, and a lot of other nations. Many nations are not very friendly to us. He's transported the entire columns of uh, fighting-aged men, and they're all at a certain age. And you look at them, and they say, they look like warriors to me. Something's going on that's bad. Now the United States is being overrun by the Biden migrant crime. It's a new form of uh, vicious violation to our country. It's migrant crime. We call it Biden migrant crime, but that's a little bit long. So we'll just leave it. But every time you hear the term migrant crime, you know where that comes from, allowing thousands and thousands and actually millions and millions of people to come. Could be 15 million, could be 18 million by the time he uh, gets out of office, because hopefully the biggest risk we have is nine months. That's a long time. Right. A lot of bad things can happen. As I always say in speeches and rallies, it's if you take the 10 worst presidents in the history of our country and you added them all up, all of the problems, all of the lousy jobs they've done, you can add them all up. It's not as bad as this one man has done for our country. What he's done to our country is he's destroying our country. Uh, we were just talking before. We were, the general was saying, I can't believe, he can't believe what's happening. He can't believe it's so sad. Last year, almost half of all ICE arrests were criminal aliens charged for more than 33,000 assaults, 3,000 robberies, 6,900 burglaries, 7,500 weapons crimes. This is all migrant crime. 4,300 sex crimes, 1,600 kidnappings, and 1,700 homicides and murders. These are the people that are coming into our country. And they're coming from jails, and they're coming from prisons, and they're coming from mental institutions, and they're coming from insane asylums, and they're terrorists. They're being let into our, our country. And uh, it's horrible. It's horrible. And, you know, I know many of the leaders of these other countries that are doing it. And it's not just South America. It's all over the world. The Congo, a very big population coming in from jails from the Congo. You look at the jails now. You take a look at the jails throughout the region, but more importantly, throughout the world. They're emptying out because they're dumping them into the United States. And these guys try and make like, oh, isn't it wonderful? They don't have a clue. I think they're looking for votes. They're looking for something. Nobody's really been able to tell me how anybody could want it. You know, you're always in business. You always want to understand the other side. Uh, you want to figure it out so you can do something that's good or bad, depending on what you're looking for. But nobody can explain to me, because everybody I speak to says how horrible it is. Nobody can explain to me how allowing millions of people from places unknown, from countries unknown, who don't speak languages. We have languages coming into our country. We have nobody that even speaks those languages. They're, they're truly foreign languages. Nobody speaks them. And they're pouring into our country, and they're bringing with them tremendous problems, including medical problems. As you know, we had Title II, and we had different things to solve that problem, but they've terminated all of that. Even the judge couldn't believe it. The judge said, no, no, you can't do that. It would be horrible to do that. And he let it go. and. But he said in six months it expires, and uh, it expired, and that's it. So I just think you're doing an incredible uh, job. Just one week ago, a beautiful 22-year-old nursing student from Georgia was barbarically attacked, almost unrecognizable, while she was out on her morning run. She was a morning run. She was doing a keep herself in shape. She was a beautiful young woman. She was a great person, best nursing student there was. I spoke to her parents yesterday. They're incredible people. They're devastated beyond, beyond belief. But she was beautiful, just so beautiful in so many ways, and brutally assaulted, horrifically beaten, kidnapped, and savagely murdered. The monster that charged, uh, charged in the death is an illegal alien migrant who was led into our country and released into our communities by crooked Joe Biden. He's crooked. I took the name away from Hillary because she's no longer relevant, I guess. She was terrible, but he is, what he is doing is just unbelievable. Joe Biden will never say Lake and Riley's name. 
But we will say it and we will remember it. We're not going to forget her. It's been just a horrible story that we've had to live with for the last few days. It's hard to believe. And her parents are just, they can never be the same. Great people. Just four days ago, an illegal alien in Louisiana was arrested for brutally raping a 14-year-old girl while holding a knife to her throat. And he then allegedly robbed a man who was getting out of his car in front of his home and repeatedly stabbed him in the face, in the back, in the face many, many times before police found this person standing in the middle of a street, all covered with blood, standing over the blood of the man he was attacking. Last year, a sadistic illegal alien criminal who was released into our country by Joe Biden was arrested for raping an 11-year-old girl and strangling her to death in Pasadena, Texas. And shortly before she was murdered, she texted her father that someone was knocking at the door. He arrived home from work and found his daughter's body stuffed in a laundry basket underneath the bed. Horrible. Crooked Joe is the blood of countless innocent victims. It's so many stories to tell, so many horrible stories. Three years ago, we had the most secure border in history. Brandon was saying it. The general was saying it. We had the most secure border. And people weren't coming because they knew they weren't going to get in. And we weren't promising free education, free medical, free everything. I mean, all the promises that are made, no wonder they come. I mean, uh, you look at what this Governor Newscom from California, isn't that his name, Newscom? Uh, what he's done to California is unbelievable. People are pouring in. They think they're going to get medical aid. And our soldiers, our vets aren't being taken care of. But people that come into our country illegally are. We ended catch and release. We built 571 miles of border wall, much more than I promised I'd build. And in addition, we purchased another 200 miles. And uh, they sold that, much of it, for five cents on the dollar. And it's the best wall, the same wall that you're using, right. because the governor is now building a lot of wall also. And it works. Walls work. Walls and wheels, I always said. It's one thing never gets obsolete, a wall and a wheel. Everything else is obsolete about two weeks after you come up with it. And we got Mexico to give us 28,000 soldiers to take care of our border. We had the safest border in the history of our country. And now, outside of this area where Texas has done an amazing job, and in a pretty short period of time, they're going to have it all covered. Uh, they have just been incredible. What they, The operation that sh they showed me is nothing less than incredible. And I'll say this, uh, it's a military operation. I mean, we have a military, this is like a war. It's a military operation. So we had remain in Mexico, remember that? You can't come into our country, and Mexico agreed to it, and I'll tell you someday, I'll tell you why. Safe, safe third agreements, asylum bans, Title 42, and rapid removals. But Title 42 was so important, rapid removal so important. But the best was remain in Mexico. You stay in Mexico. We had catch and release in Mexico. We had catch before that. It was catch and release a criminal, and they released him in the United States. We had no more catch and release. Our catch and release was we released him in Mexico. And if you broke the law, we caught you, we deported you, or we did something else. But we were doing a great job, and uh, that's where it stood. And then we had an election that uh, we ended up getting many millions of more votes than we did. We did much better in 2020 than we ever even thought about doing in 2016. And very bad things happened. And from that moment on, it was a whole different ball game in Texas and all over. But the governor in Texas picked up the ball, and they've done an incredible job. And I'll tell you, it's an honor to be here. I brought some people here, some executives from New York, because they're, they're marveling at it, too. You're doing your job. Now we have to find out what's going on on the side, each side, because Arizona is not doing their job. You have a Democrat, liberal, or more than that, governor that probably doesn't want to do anything. So people are just pouring in through Arizona, and they're pouring in through uh, the uh, the beautiful state, the once beautiful state, it's still beautiful, I guess, but they have a lot of crime and a lot of problems, California, because. Uh, the governor is not doing his job in California. He's doing a terrible job. He talks a good game. You know, he talks about how wonderful things are, but he's wrong. And they have a big outflow of people, people that pay taxes, people that don't commit crime. They're leaving. A lot of them are leaving. So I just want to thank the governor. I want to thank this incredible group of talent behind me. And we just went through a uh, we just went through something very, very special. Uh, we we did a, a tour and we did it through all sorts of cameras. They're all over the place. I don't know. They're in the sky. They're in satellites. 
They're on the top of those light poles. They're all over the place. And you really have it done. And I'm very appreciative of it, Governor. You did a great job. And you're my friend. And it's an honor to have your support and your endorsement. And likewise, me to you. Thank you very much. Great to be here. Thank you. Well, first of all, thank you, uh, President Trump, for being back in Texas. Uh, you know, uh, you being here shows that today is a day of a, an extraordinary contrast. We have President Trump back in the state of Texas, literally on the border itself, a place that he's been to many times, uh, talking about all the things that he's done to secure the border. At the very same time, we have President Biden down in Brownsville, Texas, which was an obligatory visit by him. He'd never been to the border. In fact, I don't think he's on the border itself right now. He's in some sanitized location in the Brownsville area, not seeing the razor wire that Texas has put up around Brownsville. And he announced that he was going to Brownsville after it was already known that President Trump was coming to the state of Texas. It just goes to show that Biden does not care about either Texas or the border and what's going on. As a result, you see a disaster. The United States of America is dealing with more deadly consequences than we have in our entire lifetime because of Joe Biden's policies on the border. And it did not have to be this way. As President Trump just talked, there were four policies that he put in place that led to the lowest illegal border crossings in about four decades. The end of catch and release, the Title 42 policy, the Remain in Mexico policy, and building the border wall. All Joe Biden had to do to secure the border was to keep in place what President Trump put in place in the first place. But instead, what Joe Biden did, he signed executive orders eliminating all of the effective policies that President Trump put in place. And then Joe Biden, Joe Biden did something even worse. Joe Biden lied to America when he told America that he needed Congress to pass laws for him to be able to do something about the border. Because there are three laws that Congress has already passed that are on the books right now that Biden could and should enforce. One is a law that, re that requires the Biden administration to deny illegal entry into the United States, like what Texas is doing right here and like what President Trump did. He's not denying illegal entry. President Biden is aiding and abetting illegal entry. The second law is requires the president's administration to detain anybody who does get here illegally. Biden is not detaining them. He's releasing them across the, the entire country. The third law that Congress already has on the books is a law that requires the Biden administration to build border barriers like what Texas has built, like what President Trump has built. And Biden not only is not building any borders, Biden is using every tool that he can to tear down the borders that Texas is putting up in our state. And because what Biden is doing has endangered our country, as President Trump was telling you the stories, not a week goes by without a, an American either losing their life, being raped or assaulted by somebody that Biden has allowed in our country illegally. The fact of the matter is, because of Joe Biden's policies and the more than 8 million people who have crossed the border, the United States of America is being invaded. And because Joe Biden is not doing his job to step up and secure the border, Texas has invoked the authority provided to us in Article 1, Section 10 of the United States Constitution to declare an invasion and for Texas to defend ourselves from the crimes that are being caused by Joe Biden. Very quickly, here's what Texas is doing. Texas is the only state in the history of America to build our own border wall. And we did not reinvent the wheel. We're just building the very same wall that President Trump put up. Second, we deployed those big orange buoys into the Rio Grande that are effective at denying illegal entry. And Joe Biden filed a lawsuit to try to put a stop to it. Even though that lawsuit is tied up in the courts right now, those buoys remain in the Rio Grande River as we speak right now. The third thing is we have tremendous members 
of the Texas National Guard, led by General Seltzer. And General, thank you. And also, I want to take this time to thank uh, 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 Martin Freeman from uh, the uh, Texas Department of Public Safety and Mike Banks, where we have our own border czar. Mike Banks has spent uh, more time uh, as the Texas border czar in one day than the United States border czar has spent in our entire tenure. And I want to thank Mike Banks for his, his job as a former Border Patrol agent and now as the Texas border czar. But what our National Guard has done, they have sealed off this entire park and taken it over because this area was being used by the Biden administration to violate the laws of the United States of America. And I said, I will not allow this Texas land to be used by the Biden administration to violate American laws. And I asked the National Guard to take it over, and they did in one day. But this is the important fact. Since they took it over, the number of people that used to come across the border before were 3,000, 4,000, sometimes 5,000 people a day. Now, since this park has been taken over and wired shut, there is, on average, about six or seven people coming across a day. Most of them are in violation of state law for trespassing, and they are arrested uh, when they come into this park. And so for all practical purposes, this part of the border is sealed. Same goes for where Joe Biden is right now. Where Joe Biden is on, on the, the night that Joe Biden lifted Title 42, Brownsville, Texas, was ground zero where people were crossing across the border illegally. And immediately, the Texas National Guard wired that shut. So an area during the time of Joe Biden before Title 42 was, uh, or when Title 42 was lifted, there were thousands of people coming across the border. Now there is, on average, about 14 people crossing the border in that area. And that's because the Texas National Guard has wired it shut. Because we are having to do so much to secure our border, that's exactly why five miles south of here, Texas has now launched its own Texas National Guard military base that will house 2,300 Texas National Guard. So they will be able to more swiftly and more effectively continue to secure a border. And the last thing I'll say is this, unless and until Joe Biden steps up and does his job, that he has the power to do already to enforce the laws of the United States of America, Texas will continue to bust those migrants to sanctuary cities all across the United States of America. But I am very thankful for the model set by President Trump. President Trump showed that when he was in office, he was able to secure the border. And I know that when he is reelected as our president, our border will once again be secured. So thank you, President Trump. At this time, I would like to introduce you uh, to uh, the person leading the, the uh, effort on behalf of the Texas National Guard, General Seltzer. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, your Texas National Guard remains decisively engaged across 1,254 miles of Texas border from El Paso down to Brownsville. Uh, we are blocking illegal immigration, drug smuggling, weapon smuggling into this state. We do this in depth. We have boats on the river, as you can see. We have drones in the sky. We have a radar truck right over there uh, that can track 300 targets at once. And if they get to the shore, as everyone has just said, they're going to meet miles and miles of barrier. And if they get through the barrier, they're going to meet thousands of Texas soldiers and thousands of DPS troopers who are going to arrest them. So if you are around the world contemplating coming to do an illegal entry into the United States of America, you need to think twice about that. Go somewhere else or don't even begin your journey, because if you get through that wire, we're going to arrest you. In Venezuela, there's one leader, dictator, I should say, you didn't mention, Nicolas Maduro. What should the United States do to deal 
with Maduro, his cartel of the sons, and also the Mexican cartels, which are making billions of dollars in human smuggling. Sure. Uh, Governor, I'll go and uh, sure. you, so, uh, yeah, go ahead. Li listen, I, I would, if Biden were here, I would tell him exactly what I told him when I met him on the tarmac in El Paso, the, the last time he visited Texas. Uh, and on the tarmac in El Paso, I handed him a one-page document uh, that listed all the items I talked about here about the laws that already exist that he can enforce to secure the border. So I handed him that document and also handed it to Secretary Bjorkas, who was there at the time. And I, I told them uh, there are these three simple strategies that you can take right now to secure the border to stop all the madness that's taking place. They said they would take a, a look at it. I've not heard from them since that time. In Venezuela, it's a very terrible situation. When I left, they were in very bad shape. We would have done something very easily with them, uh, just like we had uh, a lot of countries in very bad shape. As you know, uh, just to go to a different part of the world, Iran was broke, and they weren't going to be attacking Israel. They had no money. They weren't giving it to Hamas. They weren't giving it to Hezbollah. They weren't giving it to anybody. They didn't have it. Now they're a rich country again. They have $250 billion, and rich as you can be, and they're handing the money out all over the place. So, you know, a lot of things changed. Venezuela was in bad shape. Now they're in good shape. We actually buy their oil, if you can believe it. And we refine it in Houston. It's the only place where you can refine it, because it's really tar, much more so than oil. But uh, we would not be playing games with Venezuela. They would not be doing what they're doing. Now they're sending people, and they just put out a statement last week. We're not taking them back. They're sending their people from jails and prisons and mental institutions, and they say, we're not taking them back. That wouldn't happen with the Trump administration, that I can tell you. Uh, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank the governor and the entire group of people behind me. And I would call them staff, and I would call them representatives and generals. They are unbelievable people. The job they've done so quickly and so effectively. And uh, congratulations. Congratulations to all of you guys. Fantastic job. Really, General? Great job. Thank you all very much. Great honor. Thank you. On the what? Well, I hear he's going to be uh, not going to be leader, and he's taken that step. And uh, a lot of people are calling me to to politic for that particular job. Would you like to be the leader? I think I might have. I might I'd, have to choose this guy. I'd rather be governor of Texas. I think you're doing well. I want to keep you in Texas. No, it's uh, people were surprised by it, but. It's going to be — it's all going to work out. We're going to end up with a great leader. Well, I can't say that. Uh, a lot of good choices, but I can't say that. Thank you very much, everybody. A few remarks uh, with the press. All right, President Trump taking a couple questions here from the press that's gathered here.